My name is Martha Zink. I'm with Salian Consulting, and this is my first video on iBeacons and FileMaker 15. iBeacons are a cool technology. They are these little Bluetooth emitting devices that you can place around a, some location, a warehouse, a museum, a zoo, and so on. But before I get into the technical stuff, let me just paint a scenario to kind of give you an idea of where this would apply. So imagine being in a zoo and wanting more information about the animals around you, or being in a warehouse and knowing what part of the warehouse you might be close to. The example that I've chosen here for the demo is the idea of being in a museum and being able to know what pieces of art are near you and getting more information about the artwork. So here we're looking at my iPhone, and I'm going to go ahead and click on this refresh button at the bottom of the iPhone, and you'll see I get searching for iBeacons. Now this is a dialogue that I wouldn't show to users, but basically it is the result of the beacon range function. So it's going to give me a lot of information. There at the bottom I have another calculation that tells me how many beacons it found. So in this case it found one. And what it shows me is it shows me the artwork that relates to that iBeacon. Now I'm going to move my iPhone a little bit closer to the other iBeacons I have in the room here. And you'll see that now it's actually found two iBeacons. So now I should get what's nearby and I should see those two different pieces of art. Now I could click on either of these images and I would be able to get a world of data about the persistence of memory, the starry night. I might get more information about the art itself. I could get some suggestions. Hey, if you really like this, go check out this piece over in the second floor and so on and so forth. What we're doing here with iBeacons is we're marrying our physical location with data stored in FileMaker. That opens things up for businesses because now a user is getting information that's pertinent at that moment. I don't have to go and search for the persistence of memory. I don't have to go through a bunch of web pages to find exactly what I want. In fact, FileMaker knows where I am or has an idea of where I am and I can get some information based on that. So let's talk about how this is all set up in FileMaker. So here on the side of the screen is a layout that shows you what we were looking at on the iPhone. And here I have a separate window and th these are just fields on a layout, but I wanted to show you what the function is and then what you're going to get from that function. So the function is called range beacons. The function itself can have up to four parameters, the ID, a timeout number, a major, and a minor. Now, one thing to know about the iBeacon, the iBeacon has three pieces of information that it sends back the ID, a major number, and a minor number. Now let me show you some data and we'll come back to this in a second here. If you look here on this screen, here's some data that I've collected from the iBeacons that I have. So this is the ID, the major number, and the minor number. Now these are sorted so you're going to see the same number repeat a lot. Consider these three numbers the ability to define something explicitly. Normally when we see an ID like this, we think of it being a unique ID. It really, it's a group unique ID. So this is going to define a group of something. I could have 10 iBeacons. They could all have the same ID, and that ID could represent a floor. It could represent a different building. It could represent a different store, and so on. In my example, I'm only using one ID for all of the iBeacons that I have, and presumably that's because they all belong to one museum. For FileMaker and for the function that we call, we need to know what that ID is, so that's why you wouldn't want a very large number of IDs because you have to explicitly call for that ID. Now the major and the minor are two different fields. They're two other numbers that I can use to better define something. I could tie this number to a museum. I can tie this number to a specific work of art. 9 actually means something, and if I scroll over a little bit, I know that 9 is this work of art. And if I scroll down, the Madonna in the church is 7, and so on and so forth. Now, I'm choosing not to use the minor. It didn't fit into this example. I could use the major and the minor in a different way to almost create a hierarchy, but in this case I didn't. Now, I'm sure there can potentially be a lot of questions to revolving around how you set these numbers. That actually depends on the iBeacons that you buy and the way that you set it up through their site. So that's not specific to FileMaker, those are specific to the devices that you purchase. So by using a combination of these three values, those are the only three things that you can get from an iBeacon, you can basically define where someone is. Let me go back to this beacon result. So with the range beacons function, and we'll look at it in a script in a second, with the range beacons function, you are required to provide the ID. There's the ID of the iBeacons that I have. And you can even define the major and the minor, so that if you're looking for something very specific, you don't have to filter through a long list of iBeacons. So if you were in range of 10 iBeacons, but you knew you were looking for things in that had a major number of four, you could narrow it down to that and you wouldn't be required to filter down through a bunch of other majors that didn't make sense. 
So that's what you give FileMaker, and that's what you're going to put in a function. And in my example, when the user clicks on that refresh button here on the screen, so they click this refresh button, it runs a script that basically grabs the beacons that are nearby and then puts them in a variable and then it basically loops through all of those majors and does a find for them. So I'm using that little bit of data that I get from FileMaker and I'm really giving the user a lot of data based off of that. Well, if that's what I give FileMaker, what do I get from FileMaker? What I get from the range beacons function is I get six different things. This is what the format would look like. For example, when I found the two beacons, the data would look very similar to this. But let me switch back to that beacon history where it's a little bit more spread out so it's a little bit easier to read. The ID, again, is the ID of the iBeacon. It concept it's the ID for a group of iBeacons. The major and the minor are just two other identifiers for the iBeacon. The proximity is a number from 0 to 3 that FileMaker defines and it basically says how close that iBeacon is. So a 1 is that it's pretty close, a 3 is that it's pretty far, and then a 0 would be that it couldn't decide. The accuracy, that's measured in meters, and then the RSSI is the strength of the signal in decibels. Now I want to caution you about these three values. They are quite variable. The devices that we're talking about aren't meant to define distance so much. They're meant to define proximity. So we are close to something. We might be close or closer, but it's not whether it's one foot versus two feet. It's you know really five feet versus ten feet or more. Probably ten feet being the lowest measure we'd want to use there. So these numbers, even if you didn't move your, your phone or your device very far, could have a huge impact on what results you get. So again, we're going for the, the grander scheme of here's what we think is around you, not necessarily here's what's really close to you, and we're not putting a lot of accuracy against it. What I like about this technology is that we're taking the real world and where we are, and we're getting data that's important to us at that moment. Now it could lead me to different places. It could give me related information. For example, in the museum scenario, I could look at a specific piece of art. I could look at the Madonna in the church and click on it and get some information about other pieces of art in other parts of the museum that I might really like. So I think it's broadening someone's information, but it's giving you relevant data at that moment. So just as a quick summary, from a FileMaker perspective, there really are only two things that are important here. And that's what the function is, which is the range beacons function and there you'll need to at least give it a UUID. And then the other important thing is what you get back from that. So the identifiers and then some pieces of information that tell you distance. And it tries to give you an idea of how far you might be from an iBeacon. I'm interested in this technology because I think it's going to really expand what we can do with FileMaker and it will make FileMaker apps more relevant to any given person who's interacting with that data. So this is my quick and dirty example of what the iBeacon technology is and how it ties into FileMaker. Stay tuned, I'm going to create a couple of other videos talking about iBeacons and how it can help a business by collecting information, as well as using iBeacons to provide users with a really rich set of information, much more in-depth than what I'm showing you here. Don't forget to subscribe to Salient TV, and thank you for watching.